There it is, guys. March the 1st. I told you we were going to get tomatoes in the ground. And if you want to see how we put this together, stick around for this video. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. Today is Friday, March the 1st, 2024. And in today's video, we are going to be planting one of the most profitable crops that we grow here on our farm. Tomatoes. Yeah, and there's a few techniques that we use to be able to be the first vendors at market with Vine Right homegrown tomatoes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we do that. All right, guys, so in a few videos back, I had told you that we had made plans that we were going to plant determinate tomatoes in this high tunnel in March, March 1st, and that's the date that I was shooting for. Um, we've got the lettuce that was in this row cleaned out. We have remulched this bed. Before we did that, we put down some chicken litter for a pre-plant fertilizer to give us a, a little bit of a nitrogen boost. Now, let me start by saying this, that this technique will not work if you're planting your tomatoes outside in the elements um if you're planting them in a protective culture like this like a high tunnel or a small greenhouse or something like that yes this could possibly work for you but i'm going to show you the techniques that work for us and why we have been successful doing it this way and you have to keep in mind now the plant does not know what time of year it is the plant doesn't care what time of year it is if it is satisfied with a few basic things then it is going to do what it does and you know a few of those things are warmth the temperature that it's growing in the amount of moisture the amount of sunlight all of these things play into that plant maturing and growing like it should so the variety that we're going to use today in this row is a bhn 589 now this tomato was started or these tomato seeds were started back uh first of january and you can see um this is a healthy plant i mean it's got a really really good stalk it's it's really rigid and these plants are hard enough to the point to where they have been through several 30 degree nights doing nothing but sitting on a piece of heat tape and um when it's 35 degrees in here that heat tape may be keeping it the ground temperature at 45 degrees 50 degrees maybe so they have been through a little bit of what i would consider extreme weather for a tomato plant and for that reason alone i know once i put them in this row that they're going to be successful so the first trick that we're going to use is a source of thermal battery a source of storing heat for these plants during the cold parts of night cold parts of the morning whatever and that is this black mulch this mulch is what we use throughout the farm and you can see in several videos i've done that um in the morning time specifically when the sun comes up the first thing you see is steam coming off of these beds and that's because the black coloring of this mulch is drawing that heat and it's heating up to the point to where you know it's, it's putting off steam from the moisture that's sitting on top of it and there's another trick we're going to use that's going to store that heat a little bit better they may not store all of it but it'll store some of it and that's going to help us keep these plants warm and happy until we don't have to worry about the temperatures anymore we have to use overhead irrigation outside on some of our tomatoes simply because of the amount we grow but here and it just for the sake of this video today we're going to be working with drip irrigation and what i'm going to be working with today is a 15 mil uh six inch emitter uh i think that's p1 yeah p1 ear tech i get it from drip depot buy it in i think that's a 500 foot row some something like that anyway um this is going to put out water every six inches you can see the emitter here and there's another one here and i lay the drip down first and go ahead and let me show you the end of this row here. I did the first one to go ahead and get that out of the way, but I have already pre-drilled and you can see on several of these um, drip lines, the end of my high tunnel here has holes drilled into the bottom channel. And that is because once I put my drip fitting in here, I can stick a 60 penny nail in 
to kind of hold it in place. And you see, it basically just pops out. All right, so we're going to get the second piece of drip put down in here, and it's starting to warm up in this tunnel. I'm fixing to come out of this pullover, but we're going to get the second line down, and then we're going to get to putting these tomatoes in the ground, and I'm going to show you how we stagger these guys out. All right, guys, we got both drip lines in. The water is actually on. I had to open up my row in over here to make sure I flushed everything out, but you can see we're actually getting water. Let me hold that up, you guys. We're actually getting water down through there now, and I'm gonna let that run just a few minutes, not to completely saturate everything, but I'm gonna let it run just a few minutes to make sure I get all the air out of the lines. Now, looking at this, you see two drip lines, and you would think that we're gonna go down the middle of this row and we're gonna plant our tomato plants in between there no that's not right we are actually going to plant two rows of tomatoes in this bed this is a 52 foot row and in this bed there's going to be 50 tomato plants and i'm going to show you how we're going to do that um since we are supplying it with drip irrigation we can get away with planting these plants just a little bit closer together they will still be two foot apart so that means there's 25 plants on each one of these drip lines 50 tomato plants and you know we are going to plant let me get a couple plants and i'll show you exactly how they're going to lay out down through here and what we're going to do is we're going to plant on this emitter we're going to skip over this is two one two that's two foot so that's how far our plants are going to be and on the other row we're going to plant here and here so that's what these tomatoes are going to look like all the way down through here. We've got two foot in row spacing and we got 18 inch across the row spacing. And you say, yeah, that's a little bit aggressive, but yeah, it works. Trust me, I've, I've done this before. All right, here we go. That's it. All of those tomato plants are sitting where they're supposed to go. And if you look, they're going to be sitting right next to an emitter to where the water will drip out of that drip tape straight down right beside that plant. I did this last year and it made a huge difference. That way I didn't have to irrigate the whole bed. I got to irrigate right beside the plant and the plants were so much more healthier. So what we're going to use for a pre-plant fertilizer is Garden Tone, which is a 344. And Garden Tone is organic. It is uh, bone meal, poultry manure, uh, poultry meal, feather meal. It's a whole bunch of good stuff mixed all into one bag. And this is a picture of it if i can put it right in here somewhere this is a picture of garden tone so you'll get it at lowe's you can get it at tractor supply i buy it in a 36 pound bag and just keep it in five gallon buckets but we're going to put a scoop of this in each one of these plant holes right here beside that emitter where the water's coming out we're going to make a hole we're going to make a dibble i'm going to water that hole out really good then i'm going to take one level scoop of garden tone which is one and a half tablespoons and i'm going to put in that hole now, Garden Tone has chicken manure, has bone meal, it has everything you need to get this plant off to a good start. It's got plenty of potassium and calcium in there, which is great for tomato plants. But we're going to mix that in this hole really, really good. And then we're going to take this plant. We're going to get it out of here. And remember what I said, we could plant it up to the bottom limb right here if we wanted to, because it's going to make roots all the way up this stalk. We don't need to. We got a really good root system here. We got really good soil. We're gonna push it in. We're gonna sink that plant up to where it's really stable and it can support itself so it ain't falling over. And then we're gonna move on to the next plant. All right, so we had the halfway point. We got half of them in, that's 26. There's 52 plants in that row. I'm sorry, I told you earlier it was 50, but it's 52 in this row. So that's 26 of them down. We got 26 to go. All right guys, so there you have it. All of our tomato plants are in that row. Every one of them is in the soil and ready to grow. So if you're like me, you probably got a bunch of old water line, old polypropylene tubing, looks like this, old black water pipe laying around that you have used for something and um, you have pieces that you cut off and you know, pieces that you can't use because they got holes in them or whatever. But I'm gonna show you what I do with mine. So I take all those pieces and I cut them into um, all of them in the same length. And you can see you're laying right here. And I bet you can guess already what I'm gonna show you. So this is what I do with mine. You see this is a piece of that pipe. And what I've done is I take these little fiberglass rods and you can get these from track supply. They're like a buck a piece, buck 50, something like that. They may have gone up by now. Been a couple years since I bought any, but I drive those in the ground and you can see here, they're about that long. 
You can see how much is sticking out the ground. But I basically just bend them. And what we're going to do here is we're going to build a poly low tunnel over the top of these tomatoes. And I use a grade of plastic and I got a roll over here. And I forgot where I got this from. I want to say they got it from Johnny's or I got it from Greenhouse Megastore. But you can see it's got holes in it. Ventilation holes. And this stuff here is like the thickness of saran wrap. I mean, it's very thin, like one meal. So it's not going to take a lot of abuse. I used it outside one year and the wind just shreds it. I mean, it'll last for a little while, but the, the wind just tears it all to pieces. But inside this tunnel, we don't have any wind. We don't have to worry about the wind shredding it, taking it apart, because basically all we want to do is create that thermal barrier using the mulch, capture that heat inside of that poly low tunnel, and keeping those tomato plants happy, thinking they're actually growing in a climate that they're not really in. Now these are vine ripe tomatoes, what you would call homegrown tomatoes because they're not grown in a hothouse. This is not a hothouse, it's not heated. And I mean, we're not doing anything other than tricking the plant by using plastic and some black mulch. And that's it. My bet is, is that I'll have blooms on these plants before the end of March. Feel free to comment below and let me know if you agree or disagree or if you think it's gonna be longer, if you think it's gonna be shorter. Give me your thoughts on what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to get off of here, and I'm going to get this plastic put on, and when I get everything done and in place, I'll give you a shot of what it looks like. All right, guys, so you can see the principle behind the whole thing in here. Um, basically, we're going to make just this low tunnel inside of here, but you can see it's got vent holes in it, which is going to be a plus on our side because, you know, we're not going to take this thing off and on every day just because it's going to be too much work. Um, and this stuff, like I said, it is like the consistency of saran wrap. It's not really thick at all. But we're going to clip these things down, and I got another little tip. I'm going to show you how to get this plastic pretty tight, and you can hook it on there. And basically, all it is is the same tubing that we used in short pieces, and all I did is went through and I split it. You can see here. And what I do, I go down here to the end so I can start and pull it tight all the way up to the front. Yeah, all we're going to do is take, or split this thing, we're going to pull this plastic down pretty tight. And be careful with it now. And then we're just going to take and open it up. And we're going to sandwich that plastic in between that other piece of polytubing. And it'll hold it on there. It crimps it on there pretty tight. And we're not trying to pull this thing, pull all the wrinkles out. Basically, what we're doing is trying to keep it pinned to the ground so the heat stays on the inside of it. Really, we don't need to do every one. I'm basically going to go down through here and I'm going to pull every other hoop. I'm going to tighten it up on that. And then we're going to call it good. All right, guys, so that is it. That is what is gonna make these tomatoes grow. And you can look inside and see that it is already starting to condense in there some. And it's a good thing they got holes in them because it can let that excess heat out um, if it gets too hot in there. So yeah, we got that one out of the way and I gotta get out here and do some harvesting for market tomorrow. So I'm gonna get the rest of these radishes and that's exactly what we're gonna do in this row here. We're gonna do the exact same thing over here, but we're gonna plant another variety. We're gonna plant a Primo Red, which is a big beefsteak type. And those plants are a little bigger than these, so we may have to get a little more creative with our low tunnel idea, but we're gonna do the exact same thing here and for this row of cucumbers. But I will keep you guys in the loop on how this is working out. As a matter of fact, I'll do another update on this a week from today. Next Friday, I'll do an update on this row of tomatoes and show you the difference between now and then. We got to be on the lookout. We're going to have another video coming your way middle next week. We got to do something with all these heirloom tomatoes that we started the seeds for here a couple weeks ago. And if you missed a video for that, I'll put a link to it up here in the top. And if you found anything useful or anything interesting or just plain old entertaining, click the subscribe button over here in the right hand corner. And as always, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for your support, and we'll see you on the next one.